Hi, I'm Stephanie Laska. I lost 140 pounds and created Dirty Lazy Keto. Thanks for joining me here on the YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and enjoy the show. Why do I eat? Why do I eat when I'm not hungry on keto? Is that ever a question that you have? Why do I eat when I'm not hungry? Stephanie, please help. Um, I understand that topic. I understand that question very well. And the reason why I put this together for you is to provide some answers. So I've got five, five, five. Here's oh, one, two, three, four. Here's my number five. I've got five reasons for you to consider today about why you are eating when you're not even hungry. So I'm going to even share some possible solutions to help you because I want you to problem solve today because it's weird, right? Like, why are we eating when we're not even hungry? You know, you're on keto. Everyone says you should be totally losing weight and it should be so simple and easy, um, but you might still be struggling. So let me help you figure this out. Now, give me a thumbs up if this is an issue or a question that concerns you. You know, why do I eat when I'm not hungry on keto? That way I know you're into this. Okay, so let's get started right away. I'm trying to go faster lately because I know some people say in the comments I go talk too much. So I'll try to stay focused. We have five points I want you to consider. And the first one, the first tip or first question to consider about why do I eat when I'm not hungry on keto, I want you to entertain this possibility. It's possible that in the last meal or snack that you just ate, the most recent meal or snack you just ate, it's possible you had way too many net carbs for your body in that situation. So just for you, may not be true for someone else, this person or that person, but for you, you may have just had way too many carbs in that one sitting. Now, what happens, I'm gonna explain this to you, is even when you're having like low carb foods, like potentially like berries, that's a low sugar, low carb type food, but it could also be something to do with people having cheat days and maybe just going overboard or having foods that contain flour or sugar, right? I'm holding up some chocolate chip muffins here. You're like, no, no. But here's the thing. It can be innocent. It can be intentional. But if you have too many carbs of any kind, of any kind, the, you know, the quote unquote junk food kind or the quote unquote low carb, good quality, low sugary kind, if you have too many carbs in one sitting, what does that do to your blood sugar, you guys? What happens? Are you aware? Because your blood sugar, I'll hold up some sugar just for um, dramatic effect, dramatic effect. Your blood sugar might be trying to recuperate. That's like the gong, the blood sugar gong. When you eat too many carbs, your body reacts by producing insulin and hormones and all sorts of things are going on inside your body metabolically. And then your blood sugar might rise to try to compensate for the flood of carbs that were consumed and then all of a sudden your body's going haywire. Then that causes a big crash. Are you following me so far? When you have that giant crash, your body feels terrible, feels kind of slumpy, feels kind of tired. And a lot of people, the first thing they do is start eating again. So they may not even be hungry, but do you see where I'm going with this? That might explain that whole cycle to you. So did I just give you a gold star? Did you figure it out? That could be number one. You're like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, you don't have to look like in a crystal ball and say, magic eight ball, why am I hungry when I just ate and I'm on keto and I'm doing so well? Now you may have just figured it out. You may be eating just way too many carbs in one sitting for your body to handle. So cut back, spread out those carbs more during the day and then see what happens. If that helps you reduce your hunger and that sneaky overeating that might be getting in the way. So if you need more clarity about why this happens, I want you to refer back to a very fun chapter. I'm about to hold it up here. It's a very fun chapter inside Extra Easy Keto, and it's appropriately called The Carb Fight Club. <laughs> the Carb Fight Club. Here's my, my POW uh, boxing gloves. Because, you know, I'm trying to get your attention, trying to make you laugh, trying to keep you entertained. But there's... Um, fun sections. I try to mix it up here and make it bite-sized pieces, but the section, it's on page 46 if you want to go right to it, if you have your copy of Extra Easy Keto, and the section is called The Carb Fight Club. Take a look at that section, review it, and then it might help you kind of figure out scientifically, emotionally, intellectually, 
wrap your head around that whole concept of why your blood sugar is going up and down and why, you know, you can do this to yourself just by having too many good carbs, not even just the, the bad quote unquote carbs. I hate to say bad, but you know, some of them aren't so delicious, are they? Some of them are not so good for us. So think about that, the Carb Fight Club section, page 46, and see if that kind of helps um, really drill it down for you. So that's number one. Let's move on to number two. This might be why you're eating when you're not even hungry and you're on keto, okay? So we eat, number two, we eat for emotional reasons, people. We do. Now, none of these have anything to do with hunger. It's interesting. A lady told me one time, she said, no one's ever really said that out loud <laughs> because we're all kind of embarrassed, right? I think a lot of us are worried. We think, oh, well, I shouldn't tell anyone that. You know, food, the only reason we should be eating ever is because we're hungry. Well, I disagree with you. I think that we eat sometimes because we feel anxiety, because we feel sadness, because we feel boredom, loneliness. What else? Call out these um, names for me in the comments. What are emotional reasons that you eat? I'm holding up some fun little faces for dramatic effect here. But I know personally I eat for probably all of those reasons and more. <laughs> and I think that's okay. See, that's where maybe I'm differing from something else you've read. I think we eat for emotional reasons. When we're on keto or on anything else in this world, we might not be hungry, and I personally think that's okay. Now, you may want to fix this. You might be like, whoa, 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 that's not good. You know, Okay, I get it. Now, if you are trying to work on yourself, you're trying to improve this because it's really getting in the way of your success and your progress, I understand that. And I'll give you a little tip for you, and it's action that you probably will think, oh, she's probably not right, Stephanie. What does she know what she's talking about? But this is what's helped me along my journey is I start by calling out the emotions when I'm feeling them. And I try to name them. I know, you're probably thinking that's so silly, I cannot even imagine what she's talking about. Well, if you're a fan of Brene Brown, have any of you read any of her books or um, watched her videos? She has a show on Netflix. She's very, very famous, Brene Brown, and I love her to death. She talks so much about the importance of naming our emotions and even having the words, the vocabulary for it, because it's powerful stuff. When you feel the feelings, you name the feelings, you feel the feelings, you name the feelings, you feel the feelings. That's how we process them, and that's how we deal as human beings. Because if we don't, guess what happens? I'm going to reach over here. I'm going to reach over here. If we don't name our feelings, if we don't feel our feelings, then we just, some of us anyway, just start craving more and more and more and more food because we're trying to stuff down our feelings, stuff down our feelings. And what we choose might not work out so well for us, right? You feel me? So that's that. Now, I shared below how I eat when I'm hungry or sad or anxious or bored or excited. I'm curious to know if you eat for any of these emotional reasons. So if you want to be honest, just like I was, put it in the comments. I won't say your name out loud, I promise. You can be brave and share if you want to. And while you're sharing, I'm going to spin the wheel because I do want to pick a winner from today's video time together. I do want to pick someone to give a prize to because I love people that participate and are brave and having fun and interacting. And today's winner from the comments is going to win a fridge magnet. Here it is. It's a free Dirty Lazy Keto food pyramid fridge magnet. I'll mail it right to your house. So if you're curious and you want to win one of these, this is the food pyramid of how I distributed my carbs that helped me best lose weight. So it's my suggestions. And you might like to have it right on your fridge. I'll mail it to you for free. So if you want to win, let me know. Sometimes I pick people that say, pick me. I want to win a fridge magnet. Um, plus, it just encourages everyone to participate. So I hope everyone feels brave and knows, knows that you're in a safe place. Because I do this too. Now, number three. Number three. Why do I eat when I'm not hungry on keto? Here's another reason or situation to consider. For you to address. Um, let's talk about quirks and habits. That's number three, quirks and habits. Here is my suggestion to you. Maybe you don't have to change. <laughs> now, I kind of hinted at this on the number two, right? Because it's okay to be you. You know, I eat for all sorts of reasons, and maybe it's okay that I am quirky and I do those kinds of things. 
if you have read the introduction in Extra Easy Keto, I want to share with you a little excerpt from it, okay? It's in the greetings section, and that would be in your book on page XX. What is that in Roman numerals? 20? It's on page XX in greetings. It's like my intro where I'm kind of telling you a little bit more about my story. But I love this paragraph. I felt like it really applied here. Um, this is what I said. I'm talking about myself. Have a sweet tooth? So what? Drink Diet Coke? Who cares? Some of us are too old to change our habits. <laughs> I'm raising my hand, me. Maybe we aren't the ones who need making over. How about the rules about food and dieting change instead? Can I get an amen? Do you agree with me? That is all about number three. Because what I'm trying to share with you is that there might just be another way of approaching our food and our nourishment and our eating and our habits that can be in line with the keto diet. And that's going to be okay if you eat when you're not even hungry. Because I know I do. So let me explain a little bit more about that. I know you're thinking, okay, I'm going to need more information. So let me give you a specific. So part of my journey, losing 140 pounds, here's my before and after photo. Part of my journey is that I stopped fighting those demons. I stopped shaming myself and I started to accept and embrace who I was. And that included some of my habits about eating when I was feeling emotional or eating when I was tired or e eating when I was embarrassed or anxious or all of those types of emotions. Some of those emotional eating quote unquote issues that I had, I wasn't going to just change overnight and I wasn't willing to just put all my health on hold while I tried to figure that out. So what I did is I stopped fighting those demons. I learned to accept who I was. And most importantly, part of the journey that I went on, that I encourage you to do the same, is to learn to love yourself and accept yourself. And just go with it. And figure out a way to work around it. I'm holding up my heart. Oh, You can't argue with self-love, right? Um, really, this is 100% true. If you learn to work with yourself and stop shaming yourself for all of these oddities or habits, you know, whatever it is, you don't have to say it out loud if you don't want to, but all of those habits that we feel are causing us to be overweight, what if we learn to just work with those behaviors? We love ourselves, we accept them, you know, we own it. We don't pretend they're not happening. That's not at all what I'm saying, but you own it and you publicly say it. So what? I like to eat sweets after dinner, not even hungry. I just like the way they taste. Boom. That was easy. <laughs> was that easy to admit? For some of us, it's not because we have a lot of family or doctors or people around us that like, oh, you should know that, you should know that. And it's really hard to just come out and say, look, this is who I am and I'm going to do it. So what I have learned to do over the years is find substitutes, find swaps, find foods that I can still have in those moments where I'm feeling emotional or, you know, something I'm quote unquote not supposed to do. I have found other foods that I can eat when I'm happy, sad, stressed, not hunger, but I've learned to substitute low carb foods that would be perfectly fine and acceptable for me. So I'm gonna give you an example. Now I know these aren't the most exciting. You might be like, well, that's not ice cream. <laughs> no, it's not. Because like I said, I didn't change my habits of eating while emotional, but I did change the types of foods I ate. So for example, if I'm stressed and I wanna eat a lot of food, because I'm like, <laughs> I'm stressed, I like that, <laughs> or I need to calm down because I'm all worked up about something. Then what I do is I try to eat like a large amount of some kind of low carb healthy food. Like here's a spinach salad I'm showing with some tomatoes, some pesto and mozzarella balls. You're welcome. Good idea, right? Or huge vats of lawnmower salad from the Dirty Lazy Keto Cookbook, Cookbook One. Um, huge vats, that is a technical food term. Or maybe a huge vat of cucumbers. I tend to eat two or three a day. Um, you guys know if you've listened to me for very long, I also like celery when I'm driving. I'll eat a ear or two, a full ear or two, yes, that's correct, of celery just because I'm like traffic, <laughs> stress, work, blah, blah, blah. And then it's not like I love celery or love these foods, but it just helps me during these emotional moments of eating. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, and you know you might have to just take it all in. I mean, I talk about this in all the books, but today you might have to go, I'm going to just think on that. And I get that. But for me, I want you to realize that this was my golden ticket to being successful 
learning how to lose weight, learning how to keep it off with Dirty Lazy Keto. Here's my golden ticket. <laughs> but it really was freeing myself, loving myself, accepting myself, and then figuring out a way to make that work was ultimately my golden ticket. So I want to help you too. That's why I'm sharing my five tips today. So, so far we've done one, two, and three. Which one do you like best so far? Are you sharing in the comments? Should I look? Because I'm going to be picking a winner. I hope everyone's talk, 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 chat, chat, chat. I think it's fun to share. It makes me feel like I'm not alone, and I don't want you to feel alone. So the more we share, participate, thumbs up each other, and um, give each other ideas, I think the more celebrations, more success we're all going to have. Let's move on to number four, because I promise not to keep you here all day. Number four, my friends, is why... Do I eat when I'm not hungry on keto, and it's not an emotional issue, but rather it is a physiological one? So this is what I'm saying here. If you're wondering, why do I eat when I'm not hungry on keto, and you, you've already figured out it's not emotional, perhaps consider it could be something to do with nutrition-wise, physiologically. Are you getting the nutrition that you actually need? Now, think about this. I'll hold up my little plate here. My show-and-tell plate. I think fat is kind of an easy one. We all love fat, right? It's easy to put butter, cream, Alfredo, cheese. That one I don't really feel like causes enough stress for people. But what I do see a lot of is protein. Protein being a huge physiological nourishment-type issue where people might feel hungry. They're on keto. They're doing, quote-unquote, great on keto, but they're still hungry. I always ask them first, are you eating enough protein? Now... I don't want you to get all stressed out. You don't need to get out calculators and be like, doo, 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 doo. I need to calculate my ratios and my goals and, and do a graph. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying at all. And I do explain this in Extra Easy Keto. So if you have your copy, go back to protein. There's charts, cheat sheets. I go through this in depth and I explain why. But protein does not have to be a goal that you hit. It does not need to be so complicated. You can still be successful. You can still lose weight. You can still be in control of your hunger with protein by simply eating a little bit of protein at every meal. Boom. You're like, what did she, what'd she say? Eating protein at every meal. <laughs> Don't make it so complicated. Take shortcuts. Plan ahead. Cook in bulk. I'm holding up here some tacos that I bought at Costco this week rotisserie chicken at Costco, cook a big crock pot of meat, barbecue up some tri-tip and eat leftovers for the week, hard-boiled eggs, tuna fish, you name it. But plan to eat some protein at every meal. It doesn't have to be fancy. It, you can take shortcuts. You can eat the same thing, multiple meals in a, in a row, if that helps you. But really having it simple but consistent with your protein is a great way to help yourself not feel hungry and not be munching and not eating a bunch of stuff that you're not wanting to. You know what I mean? So think about that one. It really does work. Protein's a big one for a lot of people. Let me know in the comments if you think that could be a problem for you. I'd be curious if protein might be it. Because sometimes it's just so simple. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't really eat protein at lunch. I'm always just munching on snacks. Well, there you go. You have found your aha moment. Now, if you really like this topic and you want to dive more deeply into the whole, you know, let's look at keto and figure out what's going on, I will link up a video right after this that's called Keto Diet Makeover. Keto Diet Makeover. I was like looking around for lipstick or something. Can I pretend this is lipstick? Keto Diet Makeover. <laughs> That'll be linked up right after this program if you want to take a further deep dive into, you know, how you can improve. I'm going to move on to number five because I'm going quick today. My goal is to wrap this up with five quick, quick tips for you, five strategies, five ideas for you to consider about why do I eat when I'm not hungry but I'm on keto. Here's another one that I see over and over again with lots of people. They, I'm going to move my tacos out of the way so I can get to this, get to my little prop here because I love props. A lot of people, number five, they eat because it's time. <laughs> Here's my clock. People eat because it's time. Like it's breakfast, it's lunch, it's dinner, it's after dinner. I have my snack, it's, it's Sunday brunch, it's whatever. Because it's time, quote unquote, time. Do you guys ever do that? 
you feel like you have to eat just because it's time. You may not even be hungry. You're on keto. Everything's going swimmingly. All of a sudden, you're eating and you don't even want to be. Um, yesterday, I was at a restaurant with my husband. I'll show you a picture of him. My husband and I wrote all four cookbooks together. Here he is down the corner. Isn't he cute? So we are out to eat, uh, and he started blabbing on and on about being so excited for his lunch. He's like, oh, this sandwich looks so good. I'm so excited about my sandwich. I skipped breakfast, so I'm really excited. I'm going to have this big lunch. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, you didn't eat breakfast? And I made this face. I'm all, huh? And he's like, no, I didn't eat breakfast. I'm excited to go to lunch today at a restaurant, so I didn't eat breakfast. And he says, I wasn't even hungry when I woke up. And I like paused for a minute and I was like trying to figure this out. And then I'm like, who does that? Here's my megaphone. I'm screaming. I know. Who does that? Who's not hungry when they wake up? <laughs> I was like kind of freaking out about it. Now, is that you? I bet a lot of you out there don't eat breakfast or you're not hungry for breakfast or you don't want to eat dinner. I bet a lot of people can relate to my husband where you're just not hungry certain times of the day. Me? I had an aha moment just then when we were talking because, you know, I had to look in the mirror and say, self, am I eating because I'm not hungry, but it's time? Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you more about that, and you can laugh all you want. But when I get out of bed in the morning or when I first wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, I got to get up. I got to do this. I got to do this. And I'm thinking about my day. Sometimes what gets me really going and springing out of bed is the fact that I get to have my Faye yogurt. <laughs> How embarrassing is that? Not necessarily hungry, don't even care, maybe just like my Faye yogurt. I love the way it tastes. And you know why I like it so much? I figured it out because I was having my reflection yesterday. I think um, my Faye tastes like ice cream. <laughs> I eat it with a spoon and I add, I'll tell you, I'm going to turn red, but I add some pure vanilla and then I add five packets of sugar-free artificial sweetener to it. And I stir it up and then I top it with something like a little bit of strawberries or nuts or something. But I'm eating it, I believe, and I look forward to it so much, whether I'm hungry or not, because it reminds me of, of a bowl of ice cream. Can I get a ding, ding, ding? Like a, all right, uh, I should do a, uh. did you hear that? Because, you know, here I am thinking I'm humming along and doing everything great. And then here I am potentially overeating at breakfast having my little bowl of quote-unquote ice cream because it's just time. It's just time, Stephanie. So I'm proud of myself. I'll give myself a bell because I figured this out. Now, do you do this too? Because if you do, tell me in the comments. And then I'll have you walk away with the tip for number five. Just be aware. Be aware this is something to consider. Do you have to fix it? Do you have to change yourself? No, you don't. Am I going to stop eating my delicious yogurt that tastes like ice cream for breakfast? Probably not. Let's be real. I really like it. But knowing that I'm doing that, I think, is important for me because there might be other situations where I'm snacking or just mindlessly eating, and I could say to myself, I'm not even hungry right now. Why am I doing this? It's not that I want to be mean to myself. I just need to you know, be honest and check in and be authentic and do what's right for me. So just be aware of that clock. That has a powerful meaning for a lot of people. So I want you to think about that. Did that help, our five tips today? Are you excited about them? Did you feel like they were? Which was your best gold star? Was it one, two, three, four, or five? Tell me which tip you might think about a little bit more. You don't have to promise to change. I'm not going to take away your this or your that. But tell me which one of those strategies you think might be helpful to you going forward. I always like to get that feedback. Um, getting into ketosis, you guys, losing weight or following the keto diet for whatever reason you have decided to follow this lifestyle, it doesn't have to be complicated. It is doable for everyone. It is realistic for everyone. It is affordable. It's attainable. And I'm going to walk you through the basics. I'm going to coach you every step of the way. That's why I'm putting together these videos and all the different resources that I keep talking about. And, you know, lots of videos on YouTube, the podcast, there's like a couple hundred there's 800,000 people that listen to the podcast. Over a million people have been to my website to read blog articles and find resources. So just keep that in mind that I'm here to support you. I can coach you through all the basics. I can get you to your goal one step at a time. I do recommend if you haven't started or you're kind of wondering, where do I start? I've said it before. I'll say it again. I recommend you start with the extra easy keto. 
It's seven days to ketogenic weight loss on a low carb diet. Every day I give you a new topic and new assignments. And there's even little quizzes, like back in the 70s, I used to do those magazine quizzes. It's kind of fun like that. It's interactive and it's checking for understanding and it offers it in bite-sized pieces. That way you don't move on or think you got it when really you just had to review one concept and then you'd have it. So keep that in mind, you guys, I'm here to support you. I'm here to help. Remember, you can stay on for the next video right after this. And it is called Keto Diet Makeover. And we'll talk about some of these same concepts about fine tuning everything to make sure you got it going on. You like that? You got it going on. <laughs> okay, I won't sing, I promise. But I will give you a huge round of applause for doing such a great job today. So clap, clap, clap. Give yourself a huge round of applause. Say, yay, you did it, you did it, you did it. And then you can stay tuned for that next video about the keto diet makeover. Okay, have a good one. Yay. Yay.